Okay, let's take a look at page 71 in your workbook, and this is just a continuation of what we have been doing um, with exponent laws and just combining them all together. And so again, um, that whole premise of if in doubt, expand it out will definitely work. Uh, there are also some different options as well in terms of what you might be able to, um, what steps, the order of the steps that you might take, but at the end of the day, all of our final answers should look the same. So if you take a look, um, we've got three students attempting to simplify the following expression, 3x squared times 5x cubed. To be honest, I don't love that time symbol. When they're using x's, I would probably prefer them to write it as 3x squared times 5x cubed using that uh, type of notation. Um, and so we've got Harry, 8x to the 5th, and Janet, 15 x to the sixth and Laura 15x to the fifth and so explain using factors um, which student is correct huh I like that they're essentially by saying factors they're essentially saying we'll expand that out so if we've got 3x squared uh, the other way to write it would be with that dot times 5x cubed so then that is essentially saying 3 times x times x times 5 times x times x times x and so if we combine what we can we've got the 3 times a 5 which is equal to 15 and then we look at the remainder portion of the product um, those other factors x times x times x times x times x which is of course x to the fifth so well done to Laura then warm up number two using factors explain why 6a to the sixth divided by 3a squared is 2a to the fourth so again um, division I often say is easier to show it um, as a fr in kind of that fraction form because when it's stacked um, we can also stack uh, like bases on top of each other as well the coefficients we can see 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2 and a to the 6 divided by a squared we can also expand that out if that helps so a times a times a times a times a times a and over 3 times a times a so when we see this then a over a is 1 a over a is 1 leaving us with a to the fourth or 2a to the fourth I should say okay um, so take a moment and uh, work through class example number one you can hit pause and then come back and compare and uh, yeah, why don't we do that and we'll do then class example number two. Okay, so taking a look then, um, for A, we've got 4x to the fifth times 2x cubed. So 4 times 2 is 8 and x to the fifth times x cubed. If we expand those out, we'll see that that is then x to the eighth. So 8x to the eighth. Um, for B, negative 7 times 6 is negative 42. A to the eighth times A to the twelfth is A to the twentieth, if you were to expand it out. And again, one of those things too where... If you're not sure and you're thinking, you've got my voice in your head saying, if in doubt, expand it out. Whoa. And if in doubt, expand that out, and you're thinking, well, I'm not writing all of those down, then just simplify the example. So go back and look at that x to the fifth times x cubed and write those ones out. You don't have to write out 8 a's being multiplied together and 12 a's being multiplied together um, because the same confirmation can occur with smaller values then. Okay, um, let's take a look at C. So 20 over 5 is the same as 4. Y to the 20th divided by Y to the 5th is Y to the 15th. Um, for D, that's an interesting one because 30 over 15 doesn't divide nicely. But if you were to look at that fraction, 30 over 45, that reduces to 2 thirds. Um, and then B to the 14th divided by B to the 10th is, of course, B to the 4th. Uh, for 
part E. We've got 3e to the fourth, um, and so we've got that 3 times 6 is 18, and then looking at all of those a's, uh, a to the fourth times a to the fifth is a to the ninth, and then we've got three more a's being multiplied in, so a to the twelfth, so 18a to the twelfth. Um, for f, uh, we could stack it as a fraction, if that helps. Um, negative 16 divided by negative 2. Oh, and I just realized we've made a mistake here, or I've made a mistake. That should be positive 8. Um, and n to the fifth divided by n is, or n to the one is simply n to the fourth. So we've got positive 8 n to the fourth. Okay, um, if you take a look at class example number two, it's essentially the same thing. Um, they've just got x's and y's. So um, watching the fact that we can combine when the bases are the same, um, but not when the bases are different. So I'll look at the x to the fifth and the x cubed. So expanding those out, I'd end up with x to the eighth. Um, for the y's, we've got y to the eighth and y to the fourth. So that is then y to the twelfth. Um, in B, those are stacked nicely on top of each other, and so x to the fifth divided by x cubed is x squared. 8 to the fourth, y to the eighth, sorry, divided by y to the fourth is y to the fourth. So again, um, take the time, hit pause, and finish off C and D. Okay, so with C, negative 3 multiplied by negative 4 is positive 12. And then we've got B to the 1 times B cubed times B squared. So that's 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 2 is 6. And then the C's, we've got C to the 4th. So 12B to the 6th, C to the 4th. For D, 10 over 4 does not divide nicely. So we'll just simply reduce that fraction to 5 halves. And then we've got e to the fourth and f to the fifth. Uh, I've written it as very clearly with a coefficient of five halves. Um, if you prefer, you can also write it as five e to the fourth, f to the fifth, and that all over two. And that is totally fine as well. Uh, when we combine exponent laws, um, then if you take a look at uh, example three, again, that whole idea of if in doubt, expand it out definitely continues to apply. Um, so it, for this, it's important to recognize that two only applies to the x. However, the three applies to the uh, coefficient of three as well as that x squared. So if you need to, then simply write out three x squared times three x squared times 3x squared. And if you're good to go from there, then 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And then x squared times x squared times x squared is x to the 6. Alternatively, you might recall that we can almost treat it as a distributive property. Um, and it's 3 cubed times x squared, and that's cubed, so x to the 6. Okay, um, taking a look in this particular case, that same premise exists. So if we're applying that to each of them, remember this base is negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. A squared, all squared, is a to the 4th and b to the 6th. Um, for C, there's a whole lot of X's happening here. If it helps, just clean up that numerator first. So that's the same as X to the 8th divided by X cubed. And then that is X to the 5th. Alternatively, some people might say, hey, X squared times X, that's X cubed. So this, if I expanded it, is the same as this. And so those over each other is simply one, leaving us with the x to the fifth. So there's lots of approaches to this, um, but at the end of the day, we should all have the same answer. For D, if I cube everything, then I can't, certainly can't um, do anything with the A and the Y because those are different bases. So negative times um, negative times negative is still going to end up being negative, and 2 cubed is 8, and then we apply that exponent to both of the variables. So we've got A cubed and Y to the ninth. Okay, um, well, let's take a look at class example number four. So remembering here, resist that temptation of this multiplication because order of operations says we're going to do that exponent before we multiply, and that's like multiplying in that negative one. So 
we've still got negative 1 times then. And what is being squared is just uh, the n, and we've got 5 negative uh, n squareds being multiplied by each other, so that means we've got 5 negatives, which still ends up being negative then, um, but we're going to end up with n squared times n squared times n squared times n squared times n squared, or n to the 10th. And then negative times negative is, of course, positive, so we're looking at positive n to the 10th. Uh, for part B, you've got a couple of things that you can do. You can apply the exponent 4 um, in from the the outside or you can clean up inside brackets first that's typically my preference because it, especially when I'm dealing with coefficients that I have to evaluate if I can make those smaller um, then that will make my life easier because the way that it stands right me now I would need to know what 4 to the fourth is as well as 6 to the fourth and I really prefer not to go there and not only do what would I need to know what those products are I would then actually have to um, simplify those larger numbers after. So if I can simplify those smaller numbers first, that would be the ideal. So if we take a look at the numerator, um, then we've got 4 times 3, so 12x to the 6y cubed, and that's all being divided by 6x to the 5th. I'm just going to keep that exponent 4 there so that um, my notation is, is equal to the line above, and I don't have to uh, remember that exponent 4 it's still there, so now 12 over 6 is simply 2. x to the 6 divided by x to the 5 is just x uh, y cubed. So we're actually looking at 2xy cubed all to the 4th, and that's a whole lot easier. So 2 to the 4th is simply 16, and then x to the 4th and y to the 12th. Okay, um, in this particular case, um, again, here we have to clean up in the numerator. We have to clean up with that exponent because that exponent on the outside exponents are going to come before um, the division piece. So that 2 exponent does not apply to the 16. It's only applying to the x cubed, which is then x6, and to the y, which will be y to the 10th. Uh, alternatively, uh, or conversely, in the denominator, that exponent 3 applies to the 2x squared, so 2 cubed is then 8, and x squared to all cubed is x to the 6, so 16 divided by 8 is 2. Um, x to the 6 over x to the 6 is simply just 1. Anything divided by itself is 1 other than 0 over 0. And so it's 2y to the 10th. If we wanted to be um, extra vigilant with this one, then because we're dividing by x's, then we should probably be saying that this is the answer only if x is not equal to 0. I should probably actually do that for part b as well because x is in the denominator. Um, for uh, example D, uh, we've got the exponent 2, so that's got to be applied in to 5AB to the 6, so that's 5 squared, which is 25, times A squared times B to the 12th, and that is going to be multiplied by 4A squared B. Um, for 25 times 4 is lovely at 100, A squared times A squared is A to the 4th, and B12 to the 12 times b to the 1 is, of course, b to the 13th. Okay. Um, class example number 5 in simplest form. So now they're just playing with you because it's playing and taking a look at uh, those negative bases or maybe there's a negative but it's actually not part of the base because the parentheses aren't there. So something to consider is, okay, if the bases are the same, then we can simply keep those same bases and then... Um, deal with the exponents. So uh, when we've got negative a to the 6 divided by negative a to the 4th, so we're just subtracting then so negative a um, all squared. However, because it's going to be squared, the negative a times negative a um, is going to end up being positive. So it's actually simpler to simply write it as 
positive a squared. In this particular case, though, um, we've got, and we can rewrite it if, if it helps you to see it vertically as a fraction. Um, in this particular case, that might be an option here. So I think the important thing is recognizing, okay, I know that the base has something to do with a. I know that there's going to be the leftover exponent is going to be 2. The whole question comes back to, is this going to be positive or negative? So this bottom portion is going to be positive because negative a all to the fourth means negative times negative times negative times negative. So we've got four negatives. That's positive. That's the same as positive a to the fourth. This numerator, though, is there's only one negative. This is like negative 1 times a to the 6. So now we can see that I'm dividing negative divided by positive. So that's going to give me negative a squared. Okay. Um, similarly, let's do that with this one as well. If we've got minus a to the 7th divided by minus a all cubed. In this case, we know the numerator is going to be negative. In the denominator, minus a all cubed minus negative times negative times negative. There's three negatives being multiplied together, so the answer is going to be negative a cubed. In this case, negative divided by negative is going to be positive. So I can write it in. You can also not write in the, um, the positive, but then we know that that is a to the fourth. Okay, well done. So number six, and uh, these ones look a little confusing. Take your time. Key thing, do not lose that exponent 3. That needs to be applied. The power um, needs that exponent has to be applied before we multiply. Same thing, apply that exponent 3, apply that exponent 4 um, before you get to any of that simplification then. Okay, if you'd like to hit um, pause and then come back and we can talk about it, you can certainly do that um, right now. Okay, so let's take a look then. So that exponent 3 is applying to everything. So we've got negative 2, and that is being cubed. So that's negative 8. And a squared, all cubed, is a to the 6th. b cubed, and cubed again, is b to the 9th. That's being multiplied then by 4, a to the 5th, b to the 7th. So then we'll multiply those coefficients. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. a to the 6th times a to the 5th, if we have expand that all out. We've got a to the 11th, b to the 9th times b to the 7th is the same as b to the 16th. Excellent. Um, for part b, so then let's take a look here. We've got 72, x to the 4th, y to the 10th, and now in this particular case then, if you take a look at minus z squared, so that is going to be um, only the z is being squared, so that means that it's like negative 1 times z times z, so that's still going to be negative. However, since we're at the exponent 4, so then it's minus z squared times minus z squared and so on, um, so that means I'm going to have four negatives, that's going to end up being positive z then. So z, and because that's squared and to the fourth, that'll end up being z to the eighth. Um, in this case, yeah, I know those are so tempting to look at that six times two. However, that exponent three needs to be applied in. So it's six times and two cubed is eight. And then we've got x cubed and y to the six. And that is then being multiplied by z to the eight and y to the eleventh. So if you wanted to start um, doing some reducing, you can. Um, other people might actually like to clean up the bottom even further. That is totally up to you. I'm going to switch a color just to make life a little bit easier for us. So we've got z to the eighth over z to the eighth, and that's simply one. Um, here I can look at it and say, hey, um, this is the same as 6 times 8 times x cubed times y to the 6. So even before I multiply 6 times 8, I know that 72 over 8 is the same as 9 over 1. Um, 
other things that I can take a look at. And you know what? If it's starting to get really messy for you, then just rewrite it. So at this point, I'm just going to do a little update. I've got 9x to the 4th, y to the 10th. Um, because the biggest mistakes people make at this point when there's this much going on is they can't read their writing or their little exponents just get lost. Um, and that's over 6 x and the cubed and then I've got a y to the 6 and y to the 11 so I'm just going to put those together and make that y to the 17th. So at this point now that I can see everything stacked really nicely um, rather than crossing anything off I'm just going to go through and simplify. So 9 over 6 reduces to 3 over 2 and x to the 4th over x cubed is just x and y to the 10th over y to the 17th. Oh, I need to fix that piece of it. Um, so there's actually two different things that you can do. Oops. So, um, so option one is we could have just three and there's an extra x on the top and for y's there are seven extra y's on the bottom if you were to expand it so you could have three x over two y to the seventh um, that would be fine alternatively um, those of you who know your exponent laws and are thinking through okay nine over six is the same as three halves, then you might say, hey, 4 minus 3 is 1, so it's x to the 1, and for my y's, 10 minus 17 is negative 7. And so that would be fine as well to say 3 halves x to the 1, y to the negative 7, and that is equivalent to 3x over 2y to the 7th. And, and we'll be going through that more um, later uh, in terms of having negative exponents and what that means, uh, what the equivalent as a positive exponent. So at this point I will accept both. So again please let me know if you have questions along the way and complete the exercises.